If you are using AI coding assistant tools, you need to be cautious when doing so. And the reason for that has been outlined in our video series that's titled AI Almost Got Me Fired. In it, we explored many different AI tools and models that are out there to help us build a secure note-taking app. And the end result of them all was there were vulnerabilities in the AI generated code. Some of them ranging in different severity levels, but nonetheless, they all had some vulnerabilities in them. Where we stopped with that though, is Sneak reported on those vulnerabilities and we fixed some of them, but we need, never really dove into how we can exploit some of those vulnerabilities. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So stick around, we're gonna jump into exploiting a vulnerability that's been reported to us in that note-taking application, thanks to Sneak. All right, so let me get you acquainted with the application, that note application that we're talking about before. In this case, we'll use the chat GBT 4.0 generated results that we got out of that. In it, it built out a note-taking application for us with a server, some routes, uh, some front-end UI that I prompted it further for to give us access to. And this resulted in some vulnerabilities reported by a sneak, both on the front end side and the server side. So we have a cross site request forgery one that we're not gonna take a look at, but on the front end side, there's a cross site scripting vulnerability. And we can click on that to find out more exactly what code is having that vulnerability, which is this list item, basically to print out the text for each note in a visible format in the UI, this is what it's doing here. And this is the code that the AI had provided to us. And so Sneak is reporting cross-site scripting vulnerability because of unsanitized input data from a remote resource. So let's see why that's a problem. Let's try to exploit that further. So I have it running already. I've spun up a Mongo database that my API can connect to. And then my server that's hosting the UI and the API is on port 5000. So we're gonna go to my browser to check that out now. Okay, so here's the front end of the app. I know it's nothing fancy or flashy, but we're just starting off with the raw UI here. And we're gonna create a user. We're gonna say user one and register as password one, two, three. We register, we're logged in now. Okay, and now we can start creating notes. I'll show you that. Let's say note one, and this is the body of the note. And great, we can create that note and then it gets printed out to us. Now, as Sneak reported, the printing out or the visibility of that note after it's been saved to the database, the back end here, is where there's a vulnerability. So let's see how we can exploit that. One way we can go about doing that is trying to inject a JavaScript script in one of the fields that are available to us. Let's try to enter in our own script here using the alert, put in XSS, for shorthand for cross-site scripting, and close out that element, the script element in there. and we'll call it like a hack test, right? So if I create that, what I would expect to happen is that the, well, one, we notice that the title is not being bolded like the other ones are for each note. In fact, it's not even shown and it's just the body of the text that showed up there. So it shows me that something's happening there in which it's taking my payload, my cross-site scripting payload, but it's not actually executing the function within here. So we can iterate on this as a, an attacker to find out what's the different avenue or vector we can take within this field to exploit a cross-site scripting vulnerability here. So I know of one that we can do that I'm gonna do right now. So we'll call this the hack test that works. That's the title. And in the body, we're gonna use a typical payload for a cross-site scripting vulnerability where we're trying to inject an image element. We're setting the source to something that is not gonna be a valid source. And that way, when the error function gets called, which would cause this on error function to get called, it will execute the alert function in the browser to trigger the alert box to show up. So if I click on create note for that, we can see, boom, I got the alert to show up there and it is showing the text. You might be thinking, what's the big deal with that? Well, one, if somebody's able to share their notes and they can get another user to use this, then that code is gonna be running within the context of their session that they have within this application, this note-taking application. And again, you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal here? Well, what something an attacker can do then is they can expand upon just this small function here and write in more unique code that they have control over that can start exfiltrating sensitive data. So maybe some sensitive data here is that I'm a logged in user, I can get their session information and hijack that session using whatever mechanism this application is using. And I can tell you that this application is using a JWT token to keep track of the authenticated user that's stored in session storage. So I could construct a payload to run on this on error function when that gets triggered to send and make a request to my own attacker API to capture that data out of this application on behalf of another user. And that's where this can get really nasty. All right, so let's try and do that. Let's see if we can figure this out, put our attacker hats on again, and try to find the sensitive data so that we can at least get access to it. And then we can figure out from there how to send it to our own API. So 
if I'm an attacker, I'm going to do some reconnaissance on here and I'm going to see when I'm in the browser, bring up my dev tools. I look at sources. I'm going to look at the application and I'm going to see under local storage here that it is storing a key token with the value of the token for my logged in user that I'm logged in as right now. So all I need to do then is write JavaScript within this error on error function that can capture that data. Well, the way that works in JavaScript is we're going to say local storage dot get item and then pass in the key of that item, which is token. And now when we save this, let's call this epic it works one, create the note. We have that XSS one from earlier and then we didn't get that one. That didn't work. All right. Why didn't that work? Let's look at our console log console. I'm missing a closing parentheses. Whoops. Let me uh, fix that. Let's try two on that again. And boom, there is the token value printed in plain sight here. Now you might be thinking again, this is on your own machine. What's the big deal? Well, an attacker can take this a step further now that they have access to the value of the token. They can then write JavaScript to make a fetch against their own API to send this data over to their, their own machine and have access to it for a remote user that's logged in in this application. All right, so being that we saw the vulnerability exploited in action, let's see what Sneak offers to us via Sneak Deep Code AI to fix this problem and see if it actually fixes the issue. So it's going to analyze the situation, the files that are being used here, parsing out what the vulnerability could be implemented by, and it's gonna switch from inner HTML to inner text. So I'm gonna say, okay, apply that fix. We should see that vulnerability go away after sneak scans again. And there we have it. And we can see now that, that we have one less issue in the total issues that are being reported by sneak, but let's verify this, go back to the UI. And as we can see here, we are no longer seeing the alert box get popped up via that cross-site scripting vulnerability that we had before. And instead it is rendering things as is, as raw text to the UI here. So it's not quite exactly what we want in that we want it to render with the H3 tag or the paragraph tag here, but we're closer now and we're at least stopping it from executing any cross-site scripting payloads that were found in the note data. All right, let's dive into another vulnerability, but this time using the output from GitHub Copilot to build out the same note-taking application. All right, so in this project, it's doing a similar thing where it's letting you create, update, read, and delete notes in the application via an API and a UI. And in it, Sneak has scanned at this project and found that there are no SQL injection vulnerabilities because of this function right here, find by ID and update, and also the find by ID and delete. Now, as we dive deeper into this, let's test out and see if we can actually send a NoSQL injection vulnerability that's being reported here. We can read up more about it. In fact, we can even go to sneak learn to understand more about NoSQL injection attacks, where we can actually see a demo here that's interactive within the page to understand NoSQL injection attacks a little bit more. In it, it's using a MongoDB operator, the not equal operator with the dollar sign prefix there. And it passes that into a login API endpoint that's being there. So let's see if we can get the MongoDB to respond or behave differently if we pass in something similar for the note ID that's being used. So I'm gonna copy this and head back over to my code. And I'm going to use built. It's an extension within VS code called Thunder Client that lets me make REST API requests against my API. And in it, I'm going to paste in the ID because our API is localhost 3000 notes. And then you pass in the ID that you want to update via a put request with the content of the changes that you want to make to that note. So when I want to update a note, I can use the put request to this API endpoint slash notes, and then the ID of the note that we have there. And I can get my notes by getting, sending a get request to the notes endpoint. I send that and we could see, boom, I get the ID that way. And that way I can use it in this update request. I send it, let's say it's called test two. Now we send that and we get the updated note response back to us. So if I change this to be what we had before, which was the curly braces, an e operator and i send that we can see i'm getting an internal server error now and what's happening there if we look at the details of that error that i'm logging what's happening is the internals of the package we're using to interface with the database which in this case is mongoose if you go to the top here you can see we're using that npm package mongoose that function the find by id and update or find by id and delete is trying to cast the object ID that we're passing in, in this case, no SQL injection attempt to an object ID. And if that fails, then the query is going to fail and it's not going to send back any results. And we're not going to get the ability to query the database and inject our own no SQL queries into this interface here. So in this case, it's not actually a huge issue for us to be concerned with 
but it's good to be aware of the possibility in some cases when you're just passing in a general query that is created from user input without sanitizing it first. So it's good that, that we have this awareness, but this is a bit of a false positive here in that we're not actually going to be susceptible to such an attack via this function because of the fact that the casting is happening behind the scenes. So if you're interested in trying out Sneak for yourself for free, you can go to sneak.io, that's S-N-Y-K dot I-O. Link is in the description below to sign up for your free account today. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.